So I asked Ant-Man the other day if he had change for a dollar. You know what he said to me? Sorry, I'm a bit short. Boo, you suck. Hello, Internet. Welcome to Film Theory, where, thank goodness, our science is better than our jokes. So, uh, Marvel, they're kind of a big deal, huh? I mean, I guess it's fair to say since they've redefined comic book movies, made megastars out of unknown characters, and completely changed the way we watch movies. Not too bad. But even with all their successes, I would say Ant-Man may be one of their biggest. Sure, Avengers was game-changing and Guardians was an instant smash, but Ant-Man literally had nothing going for it. Not even a snarky raccoon. I mean, seriously? Ant-Man? The character is an unknown, the production was a mess, and even the trailer was just kinda generic. Honestly, I went to see it simply because you can only play solitaire for so long before the loneliness starts to weigh on your cold, dead heart. Forever alone. But crippling loneliness be darned, I was blown away. The characters were lovable, the action was so, so clever. And it gave me a newfound respect for Baskin Robbins. Baskin Robbins always finds out. But topping that sweet, sweet 31 flavor ice cream sundae was the delicious cherry of science. Because in trying to come up with a perfectly valid explanation for Ant-Man's ability to shrink and grow, Marvel, without realizing it, created the strongest, most devastating superhero in their on-screen universe thus far. Had the events of the movie been real, Ant-Man would have destroyed the planet. It's a detail Marvel overlooked, but like Baskin Robbins, Robins, I always find out. So Scott Lang, the Ant-Man, has the ability to shrink and increase in size. This is explained through the use of Pym Particles, a rare group of subatomic particles that shrink or increase the distance between atoms or the distance between parts of the atom. Now, that may sound crazy, but the scientific basis is totally plausible. You know how everything around you is made of atoms? Well, atoms are mostly made of empty space. Take, for instance, the hydrogen atom, which is roughly 99.9999999996% empty. Jeez, that is a lot of nines. Which brings us to a mind-blowing fact. If you were to squeeze all of the space out of the atoms in the human body, you could fit the particles of the entire human race inside of a sugar cube. All of humanity's particles could exist in a volume that small. Sweet! Literally. Which obviously begs the question, if your body body is made of mostly empty space, why can't your hand pass through the computer screen? Well, how do you know? Have you tried it now that you know the truth? Seriously, reach out, touch the screen. You just gotta believe. That I'm obviously trolling you. Stop smudging your screen. Of course your hand can't pass through it. You think watching a YouTube video is gonna change decades worth of physics that you know from personal experience? I appreciate your faith in me, but sadly, I do not yet have the ability to bend physical realities of reality. But that being said, here's a crazy thing. In the moment of you touching the screen, you weren't actually touching it. The chair you're sitting on? Not touching that either. You're hovering on top of it. The electrons of the chair are repelling the electrons of your butt. Negative charges are repelling each other. That's why despite being mostly empty space, all you overeager youngsters aren't gonna be able to phase through the walls of the girls' locker room anytime soon. How dare you respect their privacy? But what it does mean is that, in theory, if pin particles could increase or decrease the distance between atoms, they could feasibly work. The fake science makes sense. Almost. The movie explicitly states that Pym particles only change the distance between atoms. They don't actually change the number of atoms. What that means is that when they change the size of an object, the mass stays the same. Mass, aka the quantity of matter the object has, aka the number of atoms. So, if Scott's mass stays the same, but his volume is either shrinking or expanding, what's really changing is his density. Density equals mass 
mass divided by volume, and messing with this completely changes all the events that you see in the movie, including giving Scott the ability to destroy the planet. Let's break it down. Take for instance the multiple times pin particles are used to increase the size of objects. The two that immediately pop to mind for me are the giant ant and the Thomas the Tank Engine toy. These moments near the end of the movie were unexpected and absolutely hilarious. Some of the most creative humor I've seen in a movie in a long time, but the real life physics would have made them even more ridiculous. On average, ants only tend to have a mass of about 3 milligrams, but the pin particles now expand those 3 milligrams of mass to a volume the size of a human, which is about 66.4 liters. 67.4 if you include my daily liter of Diet Coke. Throwing that into D equals MV means that the density of the ant would be at 0 0.04 milligrams per liter. What's that mean? Well, consider this. The density of air is 1,200 milligrams per liter. That ant would be lighter than air. He would literally float away like a giant creepy ant balloon. The same would hold true for the giant Thomas the Tank Engine. Forget bursting through the house and crushing that cop car. The thing would just drift away like a bouncy castle caught in a breeze. By the way, that sort of thing has actually been a pretty serious problem around the country. Not rogue Thomas the Tank Engines, but bouncy castles on the breeze. In 2011 alone, at least 10 bouncy castles either floated away or collapsed because they weren't properly tied up, injuring more than 40 people. It's like a twisted version of Up. So parents, remember, guns don't kill people. This public service announcement is brought to you by the Film Theorist Council for Public Safety. Long story short, haphazardly tossing those enlarging shurikens around would result in some pretty bizarre balloon creatures. And of course, the opposite effect would also occur if you took something big and heavy and used pin particles to make it a lot smaller. Say, for instance, a tank on a keychain, perhaps. After doing the research, the particular tank Hank Pym uses as a keychain was a T-34 Soviet combat vehicle weighing in at approximately 26.5 tons. I don't think I really need to explain how that much weight on a keychain might be a bit tough to tote around, probably ruining a pair of pants or two if you kept it in your pocket. However, the tank wouldn't be the only thing that'd be a problem if it was shrunken down like in the film, so would our lovable hero, Scott Lang. Throughout the movie, Scott takes advantage of his new size to sneak into several places, whether it be by riding on ants or hiding in clothing or whatever. Okay, so let's say that Scott weighs roughly 200 pounds of pure Paul Rudd muscle. There would be absolutely no way Antony, or any of the other ants for that matter, would be able to support that amount of weight. I mean, ants are able to lift 5,000 times their own mass, don't get me wrong. But when your mass is only 3 milligrams, that's still just 15 grams. Scott at 200 pounds would have a mass of roughly 90,000 grams. He would squish them long before they entered battle. And forget all those scenes where Ant-Man is climbing on people or lands on their gun or whatever. Putting that much weight on a small surface area could have some pretty devastating consequences. The movie briefly toys with this idea when Scott first changes into the suit and tests it out. He falls out of the bathtub and when he lands on the tiles of the bathroom floor, you can see them visibly crack under his weight. They then promptly forget this little scientific detail. But now, imagine that Scott punches a dude in the face when he's the size of an ant. Because his fist would be a super dense ball of mass focused in an incredibly tiny surface area, his hand would be like the point of a knife or a needle, easily breaking through the skin of his enemies. If he ran and jumped at someone, there's a high likelihood that he'd function just like a bullet, a dense ball of mass shooting his way through his enemy. But that's not even scratching the surface of Scott's true power. Now we're at the true insanity of what he can do. At the end of the movie, Scott must turn off his suit's regulator, the device that protects him from shrinking too small, in order to squeeze between the molecules of Yellow Jacket's power pack. He does this so he can save his daughter, but in doing so, get this, he would have created a black hole. Now, whenever you think of black holes, images of giant planet-eating tears in space-time probably come to mind. Stars that have died and collapsed in on themselves. Bodies with unimaginable mass. However, any amount of mass can actually become a black hole if it becomes dense enough. This is illustrated in a concept known as the Schwarzschild radius. Basically, this is the radius of a sphere that, if all the mass of an object were compressed within that sphere, the escape velocity from it would equal the speed of 
light. Everything within this radius becomes a black hole. So I did the calculations, and assuming that Scott weighs right around 200 pounds and has a mass of roughly 90 kilograms, he would achieve enough density to become a black hole if he was shrunken down to a radius of roughly 1.3 times 10 to the negative 22nd millimeters, which is tiny. In the film, Scott turns off his suit's safety switch and shrinks down quickly, shrinking past cells and molecules. We then see him shrink past the size of an atom. But even then, he's not small enough. But lucky for us, he keeps going. From the way this scene is designed, he gets smaller than quarks, which is an elementary particle, i.e. particles that aren't made up of any other smaller substance. At least we haven't yet identified what those smaller substances are. Quarks are the pieces that make up protons and neutrons. But he gets smaller yet. By the time he finally stops shrinking, he's surrounded by these weird, flat, crystal-like structures. Kind of like fractals, or a super trippy screensaver. Now it's unclear what exactly they are, but from their design, they appear to be an artistic rendering of strings from string theory. It's a long story what exactly they are, and it's better left to another theory, so let's just say this. Between them and quarks, Scott at this point is really, really small. As small as 10 to the negative 32nd millimeters, which, considering his mass, is small enough to create the density we need to form a black hole. And here's the really fun part. This wouldn't be a mini black hole that would disappear in the fraction of a second, this would, in fact, be a very viable black hole. Black holes decay by a process known as Hawking radiation, named after Stephen Hawking, as you can imagine. The more mass the black hole has, the longer it can stay viable and start sucking in more mass to grow. According to Medium.com, the least amount of mass that a black hole could stay viable with is 0. .00002 grams. But remember, we have nearly 200 pounds of sexy Paul Rudd to feed our little baby black hole, giving it plenty of mass to survive hawking radiation decay and plenty of time to start sucking in particles from around it, eventually growing so large it would swallow the world as we know it. The brutal irony here is that in trying to save his daughter's life, Scott Lang would have doomed not just her life, but the entire planet, including all our ant balloons and tank keychains. So suck on that, Thor! Even your godlike powers are no match for the Ant-Man. Is it too late to change the name? But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory. And cut. Oh, and I should mention that the movie's ending overlooks the fact that Scott's atoms can actually shrink smaller than atoms themselves. If pimp particles are just reducing the space between atoms, then the size Scott shrinks to is actually impossible based on the explanation you receive in the movie. He's still made of atoms, the particles themselves aren't shrinking, it's the space between them that is, meaning that he can't get to those crazy small sizes. Sorry Marvel, you were better off sticking with the explanation from the comic comic books.